Yeah, I grew up in, um, born in Florida, so I don't have the accent, but I grew up in Alabama, um, southeast corner of Alabama, small town, not much there. My earliest memories are fishing with my dad for bluegill in Florida off a, off a little dock in a park, catching bluegill with my dad, and then they go on to bass fishing and all that, hunting with my dad, hunting squirrels or deer, whatever the case was. My dad always tried to get us outdoors and he saw, I think he's always, like myself, appreciated like the outdoors and the value that that brings. I ended up going to college uh, for business management and I did, was doing an associates in auto and diesel mechanics. And at that point I thought, well, okay, I'm, I have to pursue a real, I need to pursue a real career. I'm gonna like own an automotive shop or something. I was coming up on my junior, or coming up on finishing my junior year, coming up to my senior year, and I uh, figured I'd like join the reserves, go to boot camp for the summer. I'd heard about people like going to boot camp over a summer or something. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't, there was these kids, there were the other kids, most of them had like, their dad was an officer or they had they'd been doing programs and they'd been in the like with they'd been working on coming to OCS for a year and a half or this had been like a life goal of theirs it was a whim that i was like oh i'll go to military boot camp over the summer between my junior and senior year <laughs> this is literally what it was i didn't realize the level of like what i was getting myself into i'm glad i did it I'm, and i think had i known i still would have pursued it I don't think I would have, I would have, yeah, it would have been a much different thing though if I had truly grasped what I was actually trying to do, I would have been a little more scared. <laughs> I'd be like, what am I getting into? It forged me in a way, so you would never, there's nowhere else where you can, at, in your young 20s, mid 20s, be responsible for that level. So maybe, I think responsibility and professionalism of the two things that I would say I walked away from the mill, like, and it's just that forging by fire. It matures you really quick. I would never, I would never want to give that up. I've never put more thought into anything in my life, more conversations with friends, more just agonizing over the, like, what should I do than I did in whether I should stay in or get out of the military. I mean, there's blood, sweat, and tears that went into becoming who I was, you know, as getting to the point where, um, at that point, a captain in the Marine Corps, like, there's blood, sweat, and tears that went into that. There's a lot of effort, and just to be like, okay, now I'm just gonna walk away from it, that's a crazy, that was agonizing. That was a huge decision for me. In America, we're so bad about you you get out of college, you get a job. You, there's never like a break in Europe. And so while I was in the military, I did some international overseas travel. I went to Australia, New Zealand, I went to Africa, uh, hung out in Tanzania for a while. Like, and you'd meet these Europeans who they, part of their culture is that at a certain point, you take a year of, you just go travel and experience life and figure out who you are. And that's not at all a part of America. Like American culture, you get a job and there's never like a break. You get two weeks, okay, one, once a year, you get two weeks to go on vacation. And we and so getting that exposure to other cultures that value just, just like, what are you guys doing? You guys work way too hard. Go do something. So when I got out of the military, I made it a point to, rather than go straight into another career, um, just like, I'm just gonna go travel. I went to Europe, I went to Iceland, did Knowles, which is hands down the best thing I've probably ever done in my life, as far as organized courses or anything. And then I went, went sailing for a little over a month. Um, we were at sea for 21 days, but hung out in Panama for a while, getting the boat, the sailboat ready, and then made it to Easter Island, hung out there for eight days, 21 days at sea. I was able to really process some things. And I figured out like, I love the low country. I love it here in South Carolina. I love this coast. I truly love what I do now. Um, you can't, I, I am able to make a living doing this, being a boat captain. And, but 
I don't think I would have been able to be very successful doing what I'm doing if it hadn't been for the international travel, figuring out who I am, the military experience, and the just level that that puts you at, or the potential level that you can take away from, you know, what the skill set that you can take away from that. And you can apply to another career like what I'm doing now. Uh, I enjoy the freedom it gives me. Like it's a career that allows me to spend time outdoors, like an exorbitant amount, amount of time outdoors, which is what I wanted. I remember sitting in an office and it was very hard. Like I said, my heart wasn't in it. It's very hard to just sit in an office and see in that particular place, you know, the marsh out my window. It drove me crazy, it drove me crazy. Like I just, it was killing me on the inside. So I get to spend ex as much time outdoors as I want. I get to make a living doing that. Um, I get to meet amazing, unique people every day. 90% of the time, it doesn't feel like work to me. So there's something about how I'm wired that truly enjoys what I'm doing. So this area is very tidal. So I typically run a trip a day. I like to do six hour trips. So and there's of course the prep time on the front end, the prep time on the back end, or the cleanup on the back end and the prep time for the next day. So it turns into a work day, but typically if things are right, I like starting early in the morning or you know, mid morning and me to go to you know load up the boat go to boat ramp put the boat in military teaches you always be there 10 minutes early so i typically have the boat 10 minutes it's ridiculous i'll be sitting there waiting for them roll up boats set ready to go you know you get on the boat you try to keep it just low for me um the funny thing is i never really put i think on my website i have like one little statement that like i was you know, a prior, I was a Marine at one point, or I was a veteran, or it said something about that. It's one little statement. I always try, I never really bring that up. I never, I haven't built my career around being a veteran because I don't want people like, oh, I don't want to go fishing with a Marine because you immediately are putting this like, he's going to be like a drill instructor kind of mentality. Like, Arr! dude, I just want to chill. I want to have fun. So, if, you know, if people get come down, get on the boat, typically keep it super lighthearted, super just fun, because you can't control what the fish are gonna do. You can make educated guesses, but every day the fish are gonna do something different. One day you might be on them and the next day you're not, but I can have fun out there. And so I try to create just a fun, chill environment. You know, it's, oh, he's a fishing captain, he's on. Well, then you, then you get home, now you answer phone calls, uh, answer emails, call the person for the next day or the, next couple of days um work on the website like there's all there's so much more that goes in behind the scenes of keeping the ball rolling i feel so blessed to be in the position i'm in and then i see other veterans who get out and struggle and i feel for them i i, I do and that's like what I would love to have a positive impact on those people because so many people will get out of the military and they lose a sense of purpose, a sense, you know, all these things and they hit the civilian world and it's not the same and they end up, whereas I feel like I've been very fortunate and in a way flourished in the civilian world because of what the military gave me, I see other people hit, you know, veterans hit the civilian world and struggle. One of the biggest things I feel like is you've got to take all those awesome, all those experiences and life lessons, you know, experiences better or worse that make you who you are and make, now you're, you come out a much more robust person because of the experiences the military gave you. Whether they were good experiences or bad experiences, I have both. But now you get to approach the civilian world and it's different. You cannot approach the civilian world like you do the military. If you treat people in the civilian world like you were treated in the military, likely treated in the military. It's just not gonna go well. Um, if you wear, if you approach the civilian world wearing the veteran giant badge and like your first, you try, if you try to approach the civilian world building your civilian career on the fact that you're a veteran, people put you in a box. It would be like, so your life is a, it's a long book. It's a book with many chapters and aspects to it. And early on, 
in that one of those chapters would be the military. And for so many people, they you know have their early life, the military, and then the rest of their life is like not bet like they just keep living that, trying to relive that military chapter for the rest of the book. But if you take that chapter as like part of who you are and it built you and now we go, continue to write other stories. Now you get to experience another aspect of life. And that chapter is in the past, it's still very much a part of who you are and it builds you, but now you get to build another aspect of life. And now I have a family that I'm now starting to like build an, another chapter intertwined in that and like moving on with life. Somebody I have a lot of respect for said something to the effect of, uh, a person that gets to live many lives has lived a good life. And in the being a veteran, you get to do exactly that. It's kind of like cheating in a way, because like my peers or my quote unquote competition, they don't have all those tools. Like, like when I'm talking to people, when we're on the boat and we're interacting, the interactions and the depth of conversation that I can have with people and like the life experience that, you know, that's, I can connect with people, CEOs of businesses or like whatever, because I've had some crazy life experiences. I'm not just a kid who, you know, got my captain's license and now I'm guiding and I've never done anything with my life. I've been around the world and done some crazy, you know, done some crazy things. Um, and I can like leverage all that experience. Like that's the thing I wish I could connect with more veterans and be like, dude, this is a big bright world. There's so much opportunity here and so much more opportunity because of the tools and the experiences that we have than the average person has. Like you can be so successful out here. Figure out what your values are, pursue that, and you're probably gonna be really successful. For me, my values are uh, quality of life and things like that, so I've pursued the career I've pursued. Um, uh, being a fishing captain, I'm less concerned about the financial side of it and more concerned about just enjoying my life and keeping things fun um, and a little bit more low-key but I think I was trying to take that somewhere I just everybody's different everybody's different what we value is different so if you can figure out what your values are leverage your military experience the tools that the military has given you the all that life experience and then pursue your passion whether you know whether your passion is that you want to be part of the corporate America or start your own business or anything like that, like there's opportunity to be successful doing that um, with those tools that you know leveraging the tools that you've learned and been given through your experience in the military. But I'm still figuring it out. I, who knows? Yeah. I just hate. I hate the. the I'm not gonna this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just figuring it out, Captain Rob.